we want to calculate the surface area of some curved shape. Suppose it's the area under the curve of some function or a surface that we can decompose into these. In most cases, we do not know the explicit formula for that, but maybe there is a more general method of calculating the surface area under almost any function's curve. Maybe we could use some simpler shapes, the area of which we know how to compute such as rectangles. Notice how some rectangles can be fit under the curve. Looks like they could be a decent approximation of what we are looking for, don't they? Let's specify what we will actually try to do. Our goal is to calculate the area between the curve of some bounded function and the x-axis over a fixed interval. For now, we will denote the area by the letter i. What about the parts that are under the axis? The natural way of handling that is to consider their value as negative. Let me give an example to illustrate that. We want to calculate how much dirt we need to form a hill. Getting the dirt by digging a hole decreases the amount of dirt we need to bring from outside. However, Aiming at computing the traditional total area, we take the absolute value of our function and proceed. So think of negative values as a feature, rather than an abstraction. Our next step is the formal definition of a partition. Take the interval AB. Notice how it can be divided by points in numerous ways and how this process gives us some small intervals each of them being an edge of a certain rectangle. So make a division by choosing finitely many points. The first point of the partition is always A, and the last one always B. The rest can be chosen from all of the points between A and B. The partition will be denoted by the letter P. We will denote the points in it by Xi for i ranging from 1 to the number of points we've chosen. It is important to bear in mind how the partition is defined because it is directly related to the choice of those rectangles we keep talking about. Note that each partition is an element of the set of all partitions of our interval, denoted by the fancy-looking letter p. Getting back to the small intervals, they are all contained between consecutive pairs of points of the partition. And to be precise, the points come first. The intervals are the consequence. This is how we get the bottom edges of the rectangles used for the approximation of the area under the curve. Another thing we think of while looking at those rectangles is that we can put them under the curve as well as cover the curve with them. Remember the small intervals resulting from the definition of a partition and their corresponding rectangles? Now we can add a rule for each rectangle. Let the rectangle intersect with the curve of our function at the infimum of said function over a single small interval or the supremum over that interval. This idea has its formal equivalent, lower and upper Darbu sums. The lower sum consists of the infima of the function over the small intervals times the length of those intervals. The upper sum is similar, with the suprema instead of the infima. It means that we are basically using the simple formula of the surface area for each rectangle and then add them all up. Fine, those sums kinda approximate our area in some way, but how do we extract the actual value out of them? How do we find the best sums? Take a peek at how the choice of the partition impacts the behavior of the lower sums and the upper sums. This is no coincidence, remember it. We will need this observation later. For now, it is enough to understand that the choice of the partition has a direct impact on how good the approximation is. Now, let us introduce the definitions of lower and upper integrals. We just saw how the changes in partition and the changes in lower and upper sums are related. 
Our observation should be that the lower darbusams are always smaller than the actual area and the upper darbusams always bigger. Take the infimum of the upper sum and the supremum of the lower sum. Both of these we are taking over all possible partitions. The first one is what we call the upper integral. The second one is the lower integral. The definition might seem complicated at first. The intuition behind it is as follows. Given the area of the rectangles always bigger than the area under the curve of our function, make it as small as possible. Similarly, given the area always smaller, make it as big as possible. This gives us the best lower and upper bounds of the surface area we are looking for. Notice that still the lower integral gives us less or equal than the area we are looking for and the upper integral more or equal respectively. We would like this process to give us the rectangles that hug the function very closely from each side. We want them to be as close as possible. And you know what? That's a very reasonable thing to want. The last step we are taking here is defining the integral, which is our goal, the area. We say that the bounded function is Riemann integrable if and only if its lower and upper integrals over a fixed interval are equal. Moreover, this means that the proper integral exists and is equal to lower and upper integrals. And the letter i we previously used for the surface area, now it can be replaced by a fully fledged symbol of the integral. Since lower and upper integrals are the lower and upper bounds of the area we are looking for, the value of the surface area follows from their equality. Be careful, some functions are not Riemann integrable. Let's take the Dirichlet function over the interval 0, 1. This function assigns 1 to every rational number and 0 to every irrational number. It is nowhere continuous. Since rational numbers are a dense subset of real numbers, whatever partition we choose, the supremum over any interval will be equal to 1 and the infimum will be 0. Hence, every lower Darboux sum will be equal to 0 and every upper will equal 1. So, the integrals, which are suprema or infima of these, will be equal to 0 or 1. Notice how this example illustrates that not all bounded functions are Riemann integrable. Taking into account that our intuition behind Riemann integration is calculating the area under the curve, it kinda makes sense. Try to figure out the area of something like this. Of course, we can calculate the integral of this function, but it won't be a Riemann integral. Yes, other kinds of integration exist such as Lebeck, which we would use to calculate the integral of this function.